In this video, I'm going to give you the September Immigrant Visa Processing Update and NVC National Visa Center Insider Tips. If you're going through the immigration process, you have a case at an embassy or consulate worldwide, or a case stuck at NVC, you want to watch this video. So, what are you waiting for? I'll see you on the other side. Hello everybody and welcome back to Immigration Channel. This is the place where you get the most up-to-date immigration news, immigration information and everything else that you need to make your immigration journey less stressful. My name is Jacob Sapochnik and I'm an immigration attorney located in Sedeo, California. I help clients all over the world in all 50 states. In this video, I'll cover the September immigrant visa processing update as well as MVC insider tips for you. So make sure you watch this video all the way until the end. I'll cover transfers of cases from UCIS to MVC, some important updates. We'll talk about some MVC timeframes that you need to know. We'll go over the CAC system, just some best practices for you to be aware of. Explaining again how to check for your case update inside that system. And finally, we'll talk about some expedited requests as well. But before we do that, if you're here for the first time, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. And also give us a big like so YouTube will be able to show this video to more people just like you. And as always, if you're here and you need assistance with your case, text me 619-483-4549. I'm here for you. So as you know, the National Visa Center is operated by the Department of State. And its job is to administer the processing of immigrant visas after the approval by USCIS. But before the case is actually sent, to the U.S. Embassy for a final interview. So it's kind of like a buffer agency between USCIS and the consular offices and embassies. So let's talk about notifications of transfer of cases from USCIS to the Department of State, to National Visa Center. Typically when you file your application, your I-130, immigrant petition, or I-140 if it's an employment base, you have to designate in the petition that this is gonna be a consular processing case. If you don't do that, it's gonna take longer for UCIS to designate this case properly. So for example, if you start your application as an adjustment of status application, I-130-45, and then you change your mind and you want to process your case through a U.S. Embassy overseas, UCIS will not automatically send your case to MVC and MVC will send it back to the U.S. Embassy. You have to file a form requesting that to happen. Typically, it's done on form I-824. So it's very important to be careful in the beginning of your case to designate your application properly. Recently, I reported in another video that there's been some cases, recent cases, where UCIS finished adjudicating a case, supposedly sent it to National Visa Center, but National Visa Center has no records or indication that such case was received or transferred. From a recent update from the Department of State, they said that National Visa Center will continue to work with UCIS to track those cases and make sure that they are gonna be processed. As I mentioned in that video, if your case has been approved by UCIS and it's been 60 days since the approval and there's no action from NVC and you receive no emails, it is your job to contact them to let them know that your petition was approved and they're gonna initiate a process to locate your file. Let's talk about and explain National Visa Center timeframes. So as you know, National Visa Center processing time continue to be long and delayed. This is because there's been almost two years where a lot of these embassies were not open and we've seen a lot of delays in visa processing. As a result, National Visa Center is not able to send those cases to the proper post for adjudication and the backlog continues to grow. What really happens over there is that there are a few stages. The first stage when a case arrives to an MVC is the case creation stage. This includes creating a case number in the CAC, the Consular Electronic Application Center, that's the first step that happens when the case arrives to the National Visa Center. And at that point, a welcome letter is sent to the applicant to notify them of the case creation. The welcome letter includes the immigrant visa case number, your invoice ID, and finally, instructions on how to create an account in the CAC system. Once the applicant pays the immigrant visa fee, it may take up to seven days before the payment is updated in the CAC system. Very important for you to understand that because some, some of you are paying the fees and you don't hear anything for a few days and you get freaked out. Don't worry, it's taking about a week, a little bit more for this to be updated. The second phase after case creation is called case review. Processing of a case will only begin after all fees have been paid and all documents have been uploaded properly. Finally, if you wanna talk and find out what's going on with your case, you can use the public inquiry form. It's available online and should give you some updates. Once everything is done, your case will be considered documentary complete and will be wait for its turn 
to be sent to the embassy. An important tip when uploading documents to the CEC under current guidelines, most PDF files should not be larger than two megabytes, otherwise the system is not gonna accept it and eventually reject it, which is gonna cause delays in your file. So nothing more than two megabytes to be uploaded. The file is too large, you can compress it and make it easier for you to upload it. Make sure it meets the two megabytes size. Another important tip, each document should be scanned and uploaded as a separate file. So if you have birth certificates, marriage certificates, and tax returns, you don't upload them as one file. You scan them each individually separately and upload them separately. That's the best way to avoid any delays or rejections from the CAC system. Another tip is that MVC strongly requests that you submit tax transcripts and not tax returns. Tax returns are typically very large files and sometimes they're not fully signed and official. If you get a tax transcript from the IRS, these files are, are less big and they are official, will cause you less complications and less delays in your case, specifically when they're requesting your tax information. If for some reason your application is not eligible for electronic upload, follow the instructions correctly to send it to them by mail to the correct address if you send it to the wrong address, your case will definitely be delayed. And once again, once MVC determines that your application is documentary complete, they will generate documentary complete notice inside the CAC system. And at that point, the MVC will hold your case or schedule for an interview, send it to the embassy depending on the embassy's availability. That's why a lot of cases are being delayed because posts are not opening their slots correctly. If you log into the CAC account and you go to your summary page, It'll give you the status of your application. It tells you if your application is complete or they need more documents. So make sure that you utilize that system properly. It's all there. Now let's talk about the DS-260. One important point, you cannot update your DS-260 after it was submitted. If you need to make changes to the DS-260, before the interview, you can contact the post. They can allow the DS-260 form to be reopened online and then you can update it. But it's important to notify them before you do that or you try to do that. Let's talk about expedite requests. If your case is still at MVC, you can still try to expedite your application by doing this through email. There's a special email, mvcexpedite at state.gov that you can use if you have a compelling reason to expedite your case. Again, MVC has their own considerations. The most common one is hardship to the US citizen applicant, to the US citizen applicant um, to determine whether they qualify to expedite their case. There are other considerations, of course. But remember, once you do that request, wait at least 30 days before making an inquiry or trying to do it again because they're really overwhelmed with a lot of people trying to expedite their cases and it's really important to do it effectively. And again, the final decision lies with the post. Even if MVC recommends the expedite, when the case is sent to the embassy, they may still reject it because they don't feel that it was a compelling reason or they don't see the emergency. So it's a, it's a combined effort between National Visa Center and the post but those expedite requests are still working and it's definitely worth to try it if you need it. Finally, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, if you have received no contact from MVC 60 days after USCIS approved your case, you have to contact MVC, let them know and let them initiate an investigation and research why it's happening because they are aware of that. Many, many cases are going through this process right now. You have to be proactive. So remember, you wait 60 days and you contact them and you keep following up because if not, your case will not be serviced. And finally, the most important thing is that if you have a case with National Visa Center and it's been there for a year and you are not checking on your case and you're not emailing MVC at least every six months, there's a risk that your application could be considered abandoned. So if you have a case at MVC and I know it's taking a long time, at least check on the status of your case every six months to make sure that they're not gonna close your application. So hopefully this information and tips were helpful. If you need my help with any of your immigration matters, if you have a case stuck at MVC, if you have a case at UCIS or any of those, text me 619-483-4549. I'm here to help you. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.